So far, everything that we've talked about has dealt with using a single light, but now we're gonna get into balancing multiple lights. Now I'm gonna give you a live example of shooting a four light setup, not only with me just going off of the back of the screen, but then I'm gonna go around and meter it and kind of show you the visual difference that happens from when I try to quantify it with a meter's numbers versus just going off the back of the screen and how I want it to look visually. And if you're not quite familiar with it yet, this is our key light. This is going to be acting as our fill light. Back there on the far right with the strip box, that is our rim light, which is separating. And Shinky, step to your left real quick. We also have a background light right there. That one is pointed at the background. It's meant to give us control of how bright the background is. So when I'm going just off the back of the screen, essentially what I'm doing is starting with my settings as I always do, and then bringing in light, each light independently until I'm satisfied with how that light looks and then just turning them all on and bringing them together. So we're gonna start with this A light and we're gonna start with settings of, let's try F8, ISO 100, 1 250th of a second. We'll take a quick test shot just to see how this looks with no light. As you can see, it's completely pitch black. All right, so now we're gonna bring in our key light, our A light first. The first thing that I'm concerned about is my key light and my fill light and the relationship between those two. So let's start with the key light and make sure that that's positioned how we like. All right, the key light looks really good, maybe a little bit dark. I started at 1 8th and it was a little dark, went up a little bit to 1 8th and 1 3rd. So let's see how that looks. So I am double checking on the histogram to make sure I'm not clipping any highlights, but this image looks really good. So now I'm gonna turn that off and I'm going to switch over to my B light. This is my fill light for this scene. And since it's roughly the same distance away as the key light, I know it's gonna be pretty similar in power. So with this at 1 8th, I'm gonna try testing this one first at 1 16th power. Now the goal here is for it to be a little bit dark, a little bit underexposed. That's the goal because I wanna fill in shadows, but I don't wanna create new shadows using the fill light. So it's just a touch too dark, I think. So I'm gonna bring it up just a third stop. Up a third stop, and that's what I'm going to stick with. All right, so now I've got my key light and my fill light both about how I want them to look independently, so I'm gonna try them together. Okay, exposure-wise, everything looks good. We can clearly see the pattern created by our key light, but nothing is too dark. So our fill light is doing a great job at filling in the shadows while we still see the shape and structure of the face. And now that I'm happy with those two, I'm going to switch to the rim light. That one is firing at her back, which is separating her from the background. So here's what that looks like all by itself. I'm starting again at 16th power. So my test shot of 1 16th looks just a little too dark, so we're gonna brighten it up a little bit. So I'm gonna go up two thirds of a stop so it's a touch brighter, and that's good. Now I can see by itself, we're not clipping any highlights, but we're still carving out her back shoulder from the dark background. And finally, I just need to identify the output of my background light. So again, we're gonna start at 1 16th, What the hell is that? That looks so weird. So we're switching, we switched that to a reflector because that impact Fresnel head sucks. All right, background light, that's a little too bright. I want this to be a little bit darker than our subject so our subject pops off of it. So let's try this one more time. And still a little too dark. I'm actually going to pull this a little bit closer to her so I get a bit more widespread. And also it's gonna be a little bit darker that way. Let's see how we're looking. Good, and at 132nd power, that's about the look that I'm looking for. All right, so now we're gonna turn on all four lights again and we're gonna fire them together and see what we got. All right, so that's how I would do it based off of just the look. If I was 
just going off of the back of the display. I make each decision independently. Now the problem with this method is that sometimes it can lead you a little bit astray because this is this camera's interpretation of the raw file doesn't always mean that it's going to match up exactly how you envisioned it or exactly how it's going to be on your screen, on your big monitor. So if you want a little bit more precision, then you can implement a light meter, which we're gonna do now. So let's say the goal is to get this back up to F8. We still wanna use the same F8 for the exposure. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is make sure that my key light and my fill light total F8. And when I meter, I'm going to put this right where my subject is. So we're right in front of her face because we need to know that that exact spot, basically her face is where the meter needs to be. So we have to have our meter right in front of her, which might be a little bit awkward. So again, I've got my A light and my B light on, firing at the settings that I just used, and we're gonna test. And it's saying F11 and two tenths of a stop, which means I was quite overexposed. So now I'm gonna bring these both down one stop. Now the thing I'm more curious about is the ratio. Let's say I want a three to one lighting ratio. That means that my key light has to be one and a half stops brighter than my fill light. So now I'm gonna turn off my fill light and find out what just my key light is. F8 on the dot. That's perfect. Now I'm gonna to switch to my fill light, which means I'm looking for one and a half stops less than that. So that means F4 and 5 tenths of a stop. And now I'm gonna point it towards the fill light and I'm a little low, one more. So now I'm at F4 and 3 tenths of a stop, which is really, really close. I could go up 2 tenths of a stop more, but just to keep it really simple, we're gonna stick with this power setting of 1 32nd power and 2 thirds of a stop on the B light. Now my C light, you notice once I move around the model, I'm now going to point this towards the light. We're not focused on the light hitting the front anymore, we're focused on the backlight. So here, we're gonna have, we're still gonna have to separate our model from the background. So we want basically the same exposure as our key light, which was F8. And right now it's at F5.6.1, so I'm gonna go up, I'm gonna go up two thirds of a stop. It's just a hair under our key light, which means it's going to have roughly the same exposure as the key light, and it's going to do a good job separating her and balancing with the rest of the image. And that brings us finally to the background light. Now that we're at the background, I can tell that this is only one third of a stop darker than our key light, which I want it to be a little bit darker than that. So I'm actually gonna drop a little bit more. There we go. I'm actually gonna move it a little bit further away too, and I'm gonna tilt it up a little bit more, because one of the things I noticed in my image was that the top of the image got kind of dark. So this will be a little bit darker, and it should be a little bit more even along the top of the frame. So now I'm not gonna change anything on my camera in terms of settings. We're just gonna activate all four of those groups again, and we're gonna take the first shot we get. You can definitely tell that the rim light is a little bit more appropriate to this image, and we've got a little bit darker of a image overall. Our subject is a little bit darker, which means when I get this home and I get this on the monitor that her skin is more likely to be well exposed in this image than it was on my previous one, which I just did by looking at the back of the display. Thanks for watching guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. I really hope that you learned something new about flash photography. I suggest going and practicing the concepts that you just learned, but if you feel that you've already got a good grasp on it, then go ahead and proceed to the next video, which you can find in the end screen or in the description below. If you're enjoying my channel and you wanna see more, then please hit that subscribe button and click the bell if you'd like notifications for when I post new videos. Until next time, keep on shooting.